Hey, everybody. Zach Nordyke here, founder of Evergreen Learning Center. And I'm really passionate about this topic and its deal making. And it's specific to entrepreneurial deal making because I think that there's a real difference in the way uh, that you can approach this topic. It's a little different than I think general deal making uh, because Sometimes you don't have a track record when you're uh, an early stage company or organization, and you have to think different than a larger entity that might have a larger track record or different considerations, different stakeholders involved. So uh, something I hope that, you know, I'm bringing a, a different vantage point to that might benefit you if you're an entrepreneur looking to grow their their business or organization. So. I like to take what I'll call a 360 approach that is very considerate in an intentional way about all parties uh, involved in this and looking to set up something that is fundamentally fair. Not that everybody has to feel like, oh, yeah, we're all winning at the same level. I just don't think that that's possible. But where everybody walks away feeling that it's fair and they're very motivated and very incented to do whatever needs to be done. Deals are put together because you think that you're working some uh, when working in um, concert with someone else or another uh, business, you believe your outcomes can be better together than apart. And you need to really consider vantage points and think about other perspectives when doing deals. Um, so that's kind of the unique uh, concept I want to talk about today. Here's counterintuitive advice. Take things personal, okay? This doesn't mean that you'll, um, you know, take things personal and be upset if uh, a deal doesn't work out. That's often what happens. You just can't find terms that make sense for both parties or both people to work together. But I'm telling you, if you think about the, the vantage point of the other party, if you think about what they're trying to get out of the situation, if you're trying to think about the, the overall benefit of everyone involved, and you think about their families, uh, if it's a group of people, their collective organization's mentality and focus and needs, it really helps to put together something that feels right. Oftentimes, we look at larger entities that have a large track record, many different stakeholders, and we see what I'll call uh, deals that really uh, are designed to be advantageous for one group and not incented or not, I think, very good for another group. I think taking that approach um, dehumanizes uh, the environment. Okay, when you're uh, an entrepreneur in a uh, you know an earlier stage operation, I think you have to be very human and make sure that you're acknowledging vantage points and realizing your greatest stakeholder is maybe this partner that you're negotiating with. And the success of this really uh, depends on you being able to add value together to one another and together. So to try to um, do something that demotivates or um, feels very transactional, I can almost assure you will lead to massive slowdowns in creating an adversarial scenario versus a mutually focused one that's about getting the deal complete and helping, uh, you know, helping each other or helping the, you know, both organizations or multiple organizations involved in that, uh, the deal succeed. Take a personal approach. I think you'll find it a much better fit, you know, if you're, um, small or medium-sized business or even a person doing another a deal with another person, taking a human approach and respecting vantage points will get you further than trying to transact and um, attempting to dominate in a way where, you know, there's only one winner. Zero-sum games are probably uh, a poor way to approach early-stage deals. I think, again, this is really key. And it might come across as an overly positive or optimistic way of thinking through things. But if we set, if we're intentional about setting up uh, partners for the most success that they've ever had, and I know that this again sounds really optimistic, but leaving a partner better off after they work with you than before they met you 
I think is a way uh, to take an additive mindset. Oftentimes in a transaction, you get wrapped up in, mm, if I give them one more percent, uh, that's going to hurt my bottom line like this. And, you know, they're just trying to do this to take advantage. I think if you're really clear, we love setting up our partners for the most success. Like we want to leave them better off. Some people, I think, take this approach. You know, uh, when I use something, I want to leave it better than when I, uh, better, I want to leave the situation better uh, off than before I came. So, you know, I think being intentional about setting uh, the partner or the person up that you're trying to do a deal with for success is key. You want them to feel like this is going to be a mutual, mutually beneficial scenario, and you're really taking in cons into consideration what will make this work so there's a long-term attitude about let's do this so we can stay committed to this for a long time and feel very motivated about taking on this task together. So it can be expansionary, additive, and supportive versus adversarial, uh, zero-sum, and confrontational, and maybe uh, less than advantageous for one of the parties at the end of it. You got to think about the challenges. If you've created a very hostile uh, standoff environment, okay, imagine if the deal gets done and the inevitable challenges arise that, you know, come with a partnership. That other entity will have absolutely no problem in leaving you holding the bag if there's money involved and issues that, you know, cause a payback. They're going to definitely look to throw you under the bus if that scenario comes up. So when you work with people in a very human way from the start, when you're aiming to have mutual success, maximizing motivation, when problems arise, which they will, unless you're doing something that's not really worthwhile, and you have to be very considerate of that, when you've attempted to be fair, when you've attempted to make a deal that's mutually beneficial, when problems arise, you can work with that uh, group or person as a partner versus an adversary that's just another person that, or, you know, just another entity that's looking to uh, bring you down or just like, oh, I guess that's your problem. You know, you pushed me to do a deal that I knew was bad and I knew this was going to happen. You got to create partnerships, not uh, transactional adversaries. And that's a very important consideration when you're thinking about your deals. Okay. Also, what's the level of urgency? Oftentimes when we're approaching deals, um, we don't think about like, we think like, oh, this will make sense, and it may, but we don't think about when things need to get done. We want to make sure that when we're setting, setting something up, that the urgency level for both parties is somewhat mutual, okay? If I'm a small entity and I want to do a deal with a larger entity because I need funding or certain resources uh, that you know, are critical to me, my urgency level could be through the roof, but this larger entity you know, it's just another deal among many. So make sure that as you're thinking through uh, fair deals and how to get things done, hey, am I experiencing the same level of urgency or are we, if you're, you know, negotiating on behalf of your organization, are we experiencing the same level of urgency and try to align your viewpoint with the other party or person? Because oftentimes deal cadence is so critical to a successful outcome. But if the entity has no idea what your level of urgency is or your level of urgency could leave you in a compromised spot, be careful, be aware of where you're at and think through how you're gonna present your urgency. Now, if your urgency is mutual, wonderful. You know, maybe uh, you're offering a solution to something that somebody really needs solved, <laughs> terrific. But just be very mindful of your level of urgency and how you're presenting that. And I think take it from a power, um, a position of power, right? If you really need something done, I think it's just being clear. We can both win if this gets done, but you're, uh, you know, it often takes nine months to do this. And I need this in the next month and a half. And here's why. And if you can put these resources towards this, here's the outcome. 
And wouldn't we both want to reach this? So don't try to be like, hey, uh, you know, or this is what I'm going to strongly advise again. Hey, I need this done like yesterday, you know, because then the organization might think, well, if you needed it done yesterday, are you stable? Are you going to exist into the future? And if you can't exist, what's the point of even having this conversation and thinking about this? So really make sure that, you know, levels of urgency are aligned or understood and shared in a, a position that demonstrates uh, why the urgency is there. Okay. Overperformance. I, I often hear people say, oh boy, we must have left something on the table. Or I bet if, you know, they took that deal pretty quickly, I bet there was something more to be, you know, like maybe they were willing to do something different. <laughs> I really believe you should overperform as um, just a, a, an intentional part of what you're doing. And I'm not saying water yourself down or take a bad deal, but overperforming, making the other party or person involved or parties involved with the opportunity, feeling like you are going to overperform and demonstrating overperformance. It doesn't matter if you left something on the table. Uh, if you're willing to do a great job, on whatever you've agreed to, that entity, probably there could be a period of renegotiation in the future. They might refer you to other people that want to do business. There's so many times where you can make up for deals where there's not perfect balance at a future date. And I'm not saying you always should undervalue yourself and hope to overperform, but you should really put a monstrous emphasis on overperformance and wowing the person or, uh, you know, entities involved with the partnership. That has to be something that you believe in, that you're clear that is a big value of yours, um, because oftentimes you don't have a huge track record. And if that entity sees that you're overperforming, you're putting in the extra effort every single time, the likelihood of them being open to more favorable deal terms in the future or referrals or just willing to support you through hard times, it's just exponentially higher. So I hope that these deal tips help. I hope that you see that um, creating uh, these transactional, you know, one party's going to lose, one party's going to win, that's not really the best scenario that you can create, especially not at a small size with fewer stakeholders. When you have to win a certain deal at all costs or it's large entities and you know you're negotiating on behalf of many different stakeholders your approach should probably be a lot different in fact maybe none of the thought process i have here makes sense but for a smaller entity or a medium-sized entity or uh you know a person working with another person i think taking this more 360 you know, approach where vantage points are considered and longevity of the opportunity is considered, uh, understanding motivation and urgency is considered. These are the human qualities that I think will drive to optimal outcomes that will really overperform, certainly over the long haul. Hmm, got my extra 10% that I wanted. Be careful of that short term transactional thinking. Think long term. Um, additive, expansive thinking uh, that really helps all parties involved succeed and win. Hopefully, that uh, hopefully this information and thought process helps uh, for all my entrepreneurs out there. Look forward to talking with you in future videos.